Yo, what's poppin' everyone? Cerebral Friend 4, here to cover the most significant cards we lose for our upcoming Sun and Moon rotation, and what will it mean for the format. Now, comparing this to any previous era, Sun and Moon sets as a whole have been the biggest yet, so we have a lot more to cover than last time. Take this chance to grab a drink. The Pokemon Company caught me off guard a bit too, as I was anticipating a Crimson Invasion on format. However, that set will be rotating out as well, so it almost feels like we're losing 5 sets, since Shining Legends would be bundled there anyways. The original Sun and Moon base set is obviously the first one, and it's actually a lot more significant than it appears at first glance. We lose a bunch of balls from this set, two of which have probably been the most common items period, for as long as they've been around. Nest Ball for easily recruiting any basic Pokemon on the bench, and Ultra Ball getting any Pokemon at the cost of discarding two cards in hand. Timer Ball, while not as reliable and overused, was still a preferred method for some players to search out evolution Pokemon and let you grab one on average without the rough costs of Ultra Ball. Like Timer Ball, Great Ball certainly didn't see play in most decks, but was an important card in decks with a very high Pokemon count, like Lost March, and an essential piece in the Grambled Handless combo. Now, as it stands, these cards are supposed to rotate out once we lose this set. But I think there is a good chance Nest Ball, Ultra Ball, and Great Ball will get reprinted in another set before that happens. There is no guarantee, as I think Ultra Ball was supposed to come in Unbroken Bonds, and it didn't happen, so we might indeed get into a format without them. Other more minor items include Big Malasada, Pokemon Catcher, and Experience Share, but a big one in my opinion is the regular Energy Retrieval. Fisherman will still be around, and there are other types of Energy Recovery cards out there but the flexibility and ease of use the original retrieval has is a great asset, and various energy acceleration decks will suffer from losing it. Poison Barb was the best alternative to Choice Band to inflict damage to non-GX Pokemon through Poison, and that will also be leaving. Professor Kugui was a neat tech supporter in highly aggressive decks, helping you push for knockouts your opponent wouldn't see coming with the extra 20 damage it gave. Troll decks and pure control decks will also be sad to lose Team Skull Grunt, a supporter that allowed these decks to easily punish a player for conserving their energies when dealing with these decks, and is personally one of the cards I'm glad to see go away. With Vikavolt going away from this set, Rayquaza GX and any other decks centered around its energy acceleration will have to drastically change, and decks that like to run Alolan Mach for some ability lock will also need to replace it with another tech, as this card also leaves. With Jirachi and certain other support options, Rancor's popularity definitely interchanged among players, but it was still favored by many as an easy to use Pokemon for ability draw that was just a basic. No doubt people will have to look at evolutions in a different way now, as without the energy evolution Eevee, the speed and efficiency of them is definitely affected. They will no longer have the special privilege compared to other stage 1s. Other less major Pokemon include Alolan Dark Trio for manipulating retreat costs, the Dragonite that let you attach as many energies with its attack, and the Herdier that let you recover an item card from the discard pile when it evolved. At this point in time, the GXs we lose from this set aren't the most popular, but the most significant one would probably be Decider IGX, with its ability to inflict damage counters without attacking. It found its way in many decks as a strong partner, and will also leave the format after a solid run. Lapras GX provided a good value package of support and offense in various water decks, and the Gen 2 Evolutions were solid attackers in their own right, no longer available in standard after the rotation. Lastly, the original Solgaleo GX with the big attack, Lulana that moves psychic energies around, and Tauros GX if anyone wanted to try him out with the team up Tauros. You don't have a lot of time left. Guardians Rising is a huge loss, and it might very well be the most major set we lose. Plenty of amazing cards have to leave being in this set, but the biggest one is Tapu Lele GX, naturally. This card might be the most defining card of the entire Sun and Moon era. Released early on in the era and grown through our current set, this card has never stopped being overused and being fantastic, combining an extremely strong searching effect on a Pokemon with a very usable and flexible attack, working with any energy, and near perfect stats on a basic GX Pokemon. We are actually losing this card. The Collection Box Wink promo isn't classified as a newer reprint of the card, so unfortunately it doesn't count. Fighting decks will also lose their most common partner, Lycanroc GX. With its extremely powerful Bloodthirsty Eyes ability, Lycanroc GX is another Pokemon we've been seeing all format, from partnering up with Buzzwall, Zorak GX, and even other Pokemon. 
I personally use this guy as the pure focus of my fighting decks, and I'm sure many of us will miss him. Metacross GX, while slow as a stage 2 Pokemon, was one of the most reliable stage 2 GXs, and quite versatile thanks to Geotech system. With the Lightning type having access to the best cards right now, Tapu Koko GX provides a good tech attacker in any Lightning focused deck, and even a deck of its own with an Echinadal. Speaking of good general techs, Drampa GX will also have to leave, which made a flexible, simple GX Pokemon by working with any energy, including DC. It was commonly used with the Trash Lance Garbodor, which will also leave, a Pokemon that has paired up with numerous top Pokemon and has been a key card in many winning decklets of high level tournament play. Then we have Sylveon GX, which will also join its Gen 2 cousins to turn out a GX for the far decks that used him, and Wishy Washy GX, which could be used with Wishy Washy in Dragon Majesty to make a giant tank Pokemon hitting for strong, cheap damage. Water takes a big loss having to lose Aqua Patch and Brooklet Heal as without Aqua Patch, that general energy acceleration is harder to come by, leaving the role to Blastoise from Team Up. Both Fighting and Water Pokemon will miss Brooklet Heal, as it gave their consistency a good edge. A lot of great stadiums are leaving as a whole. Grass and Lightning Pokemon lose Aether Paradise, and the Altars of Sun and Moon are rotating out. These stadiums played a big role in certain decks they were used, particularly Altar of the Moon for Malamar decks, as without it, their own flexibility on the board will have to suffer. One of the biggest cards leaving is Choice Band. Choice Band was the main simple tool to use to increase damage inflicted on GX Pokemon and plays a big role in the playability and popularity of certain Pokemon, giving Pokemon that extra damage they needed to turn their big attacks into exact one-hit KOs or turning three-hit KOs into two-hit KOs. It makes the weaknesses of GX Pokemon have even more importance than it already does, and is a big game changer in many situations. The great all purpose Field Blower is rotating out, a great tech in just about any deck to remove your opponent's tools and stadiums. Rescue Stretcher is another fantastic card we're losing, and it too plays a big role in how decks are constructed, strategies that are used, and plays made in games factoring in this great item. Energy Lotto is more reliable than Pokenath and really the only way to grab non-specific energies with an item in Standard. Wasn't as good as Professor's Letter, but it also gave you the opportunity to search DCE and other special energies. The last two items are Enhanced Hammer and Max Potion. Great cards in their own right, with Max Potion being the key win condition in various decks aiming to attack with high HP Pokemon. The Alolan Vulpix from this set provided excellent support letting you search any Pokemon without spending any energy attachment and made an even better support combo with the Fairy Ninetales, also helping consistency. Sudowoodo's ability to limit your opponent's bench was a good disruption effect on a basic Pokemon, and Machoke, despite being a stage 1, was your best method of blocking bench damage in standard without Mr. Mime. Delmice's ability to boost damage from metal Pokemon was a great boon, and is another good Pokemon that we'll be leaving. The Psychic decks that liked using Mimikyu as a tech will also need to find another replacement, as it too is rotating out. Galissapod was a good GX counter, dealing high damage to them while tanking damage, and decks that like to use coin flip mechanics won't have Victini anymore. Some more minor cards include the Saijigori Koryos, with the Ghost One making a formidable sniper if your opponent had a lot of Pokemon in the discard pile, and the Saijig One being a Professor's Letter on foot, the closest replacement to that card, providing good energy search. Salazzle that inflicted double status and could be used with a Riados like the old Floriados deck, Comfy for status protection in Fairy decks, and Honchkrow for the spread decks that ran him. Burning Shadows may not have Tapu Lele GX, but it's just as huge as Guardians Rising, and we'll be losing many key cards from here too. The biggest I'd say are the Acerola and Guzma supporters. Now, just like the case with the balls, I have seen both of these cards were printed in Japanese sets, with new artwork no less, but once again, they didn't appear in our English Unbroken Bonds, which they were supposed to appear. Both are cards that decide and win games and appear all the time in the top winning decks, so without them the format changes drastically. Picking up a Pokemon with Acerola granted easy healing, conservation of cards, and reuse of abilities that activated when Pokemon are played down the first time. Pooling with Guzma is how players win games on multiple occasions, and has always been one of the strongest effects too. While these are their biggest supporters, they're not the only ones, as Kiawe and Plumeria are also included in Burning Shadows. It's when I look at Kiawe here that I get suspicious, but I'll touch on that later. Plumeria, like Skull Grunts, is another supporter best utilized in Control and Troll decks, discarding your opponent's energies for the cost of discarding two cards from your hand. It too is a card those decks won't like losing, but I'm happy to see it go.
With burning shadows rotating, Gardevoir GX will also have to say goodbye. Like Metagross GX, one of the more powerful Stage 2 GX Pokémon, and a deck I know many people love to use. Malamar decks also lose one of their main attackers, the original Necrozma GX, which while slightly weaker than Ultra Necrozma, made up for in many ways, by having a walling ability, requiring use of only one energy type, and having a very strong GX spread attack. The other two guardians, Tabu Bulu and Tabu Fini, also have to leave. Tabu Bulu served as a strong GX Pokémon in its own deck, partnered up with Vikavolt, and Tabu Fini was a useful sniper to have around as a tech in water decks, with a useful GX attack too. Darkrai GX didn't see the success as the Darkrai EX is before it, but with Unbroken Bonds, its ability would definitely serve Greninja and Zorok GX, so make sure you make use of it for as long as you can if you play that Dark deck. A similar thing can be said about Salazzo GX, which will also leave, and Marshado GX, which its ability made it function like a Mew EX, copying attacks of other Pokémon, but from the discard pile instead of the field. With Reshiram and Charizard GX coming, one could say Hoho GX's presence in Standard would be redundant anyway, but it is still a fire Pokémon that can benefit greatly from the fire cards in Unbroken Bonds. Last but not least, I can't forget about Galissapod GX, which was one of the most successful partners with Zorok GX, topping and winning many tournaments and making great use of cards like Acerola. So, as you guys can see, plenty of GX Pokémon, but we have some regular ones that matter too. I'd say the most significant one is Weavile, with an extremely overpowered spreading attack on all Pokémon with abilities on the field, including yours, decks running a few lines of this Pokémon would pretty much auto-win against Malamar decks, Rayquaza GX decks, and other decks heavy in Pokémon with abilities. Evil Shock Raichu is also a big one, being the key figure in any Infinite Paralysis lock decks through constant evolving and devolving of this Pokémon. So Vibra's ability to increase poison damage, and even stack, made it the most valuable partner in any deck that wanted to use the poison status as its main way of adding damage. With Luminous Barrier, Alolan Ninetales could attempt to wall GX Pokémon and counter them, and it was somewhat splashable since Vulpix was a good support Pokémon too. Ripombi allowed constant energy gathering with Honey Gather, which made it a good support Pokémon in certain decks. Rhyperior as a deck of its own didn't do anything, but any Meganium Swampert deck that wants to use it for its milling ability will also lose it. Olivia didn't see widespread play, but was a good supporter in decks that utilized it well. As for other trainers, they're not as significant as the ones in Guardians Rising, but Wishful Baton and Dumbbells were good when used with some Pokémon, and Town and Mount Lanakula were decent stadiums too, particularly Mount Lanakula, which could be used as another way to trap Jirachi as an alternative to Absol. Perhaps the most significant item here, Super Scoop Up, while not always effective because of the coin flip, is always a game-changing card in decks. Next up is the mini set Shining Legends, which marks the rotation of Zoroark GX, one of the most overpowered Pokémon we've ever seen, on the level of Garchomp C level X, etc. This Pokémon has been winning and topping tournaments since it debuted here, both in the standard and expanded format, including winning national championships back to back. Extremely versatile with other Pokémon to be combined with, and styles of decks to be used, and it is no doubt only behind Tapu Lele GX when it comes to its importance in this era. The other GXs in this set include Raichu GX, which made a very potent attacker with a lot of lightning energies gathered, and had all of the lightning support at its disposal and the synergy of Nuzzle Pokémon. Entei GX was a great tech sniper to be used in fire decks, and Mewtwo GX had its own tech uses in Malamar decks. Another very significant card from this set that to my dismay got popular is Marshado, a Pokémon that granted easy hand disruption, especially when used before your opponent even played, and can help its user draw even more cards too. I'm gonna confess this is the number one card I'm happy to see leave. Venusaur is another important card in this set as it could power up all kinds of Pokémon, not just the obvious Celebi and Venusaur GX, but nevertheless is another great card rotating. Raikou, my favorite card along with Entei here, is another fantastic card, dishing out solid cheap damage while grabbing lightning energies from the discard pile, and I'll definitely miss it. Scoundrel Guard Huba will also be going, so really GX-centric decks won't even need to run outs for these types of Pokémon if they don't want to, as there won't be any Ninetales around either. Another big blow for troll decks that just want to run you out of resources, and that pleases me. Warp Energy is another great special energy that always sees some kind of play in the end, make it in top decks even, so it's another significant loss. Manaphy was a decent option in tank water decks, giving you constant healing, and Shining Rayquaza didn't accomplish much, 
but was one of the better non-GX basic attackers to be combined with Pokemon like Magnism. Despite being a small set, it includes some of the most significant cards of the format, which brings me to the last set, Crimson Invasion. In comparison to the other sets, this one is the least important, however, a definitely big card and the most important in this set is Buzzle GX of course. This Pokemon is probably behind Zoroark and Lycanroc as one of the most overused, easy to use attackers in the format, dealing high cheap damage while having the strong Ultra Beast support cards. Any other GX in here is minor at best. Kartana GX could be used as an enhanced hammer on foot and its GX attack is undoubtedly strong. Crazy to think that I thought this card was broken when I first saw it a few years ago. Silverly GX was actually a decent, albeit not easy to use Pokemon, and did have some potential with all the type drives available now. Countercatcher and Counter Energy were strong cards at the right hands, and crucial pieces in certain decks that didn't get prizes immediately, like spread decks. Devard Field was a good stadium, boosting the damage from Dragon and Darkness Pokemon, and there's also Gladion for people that like to run him. Registeel acts just like Raikou I mentioned earlier, and will probably be a really good card when Unbroken Bonds comes out. Trolls can suck on losing Regigigas too, and then the only minor Pokemon are the Magikarp that protects itself on the bench, Chimeco, Cacturn, and Mismagius. Before we get into some important info, I want to quickly address some important promos that we lose, namely Tapu Koko and Lurantis. The really important one here is Tapu Koko. This guy was the heart and soul of almost all spread decks, and they're pretty much no more without him. It was a great card in just about any deck though, being a free retreater and using its spreading attack with a DCE. Lurantis is the other notable card, I'd say. Boosting damage from grass and fire Pokemon is an excellent ability to have. Now then, a crucial thing to note, especially for anyone attending Worlds, is that this rotation takes effect before Worlds. Somebody mentioned this on Poke Beach, and I agree that it's a weird decision to make, as Worlds is basically the last major event of the format, and we get to say goodbye to the cards leaving. Setting that aside, I want to get back to what I said about Kiawe. This card is a supporter that lets you instantly power up a Pokemon with fire energies and end your turn. It was also supposed to get reprinted in Unbroken Bonds, and it didn't happen. My thinking is that there's no way the Pokemon company is trying to push fire Pokemon from that set, and they conveniently leave that card out for no reason. My gut is telling me that a reprint set is probably coming after Unbroken Bonds and before the main set after that, kind of what they did with Generations last era. I might be wrong with the timing, but I think a reprint set will happen that will include some cards that are supposed to be rotating. Ignoring that, however, if every card mentioned here does indeed rotate, here are some major changes in the format. Fighting decks are severely weakened as they lose their most important Pokemon and even Brooklet Heal. Water decks are severely weakened, losing Aqua Patch and a bunch of their other options. And without Tabu Coco, spread decks will be hard pressed to find a replacement to match that guy. With Choice Band gone, GX Pokemon are encouraged even more compared to regular Pokemon, and Shrine of Punishment will probably become even more integral in the format to deal damage. In accordance to that, counter stadiums in bigger numbers might also catch on, as without Fuel Blur, that's going to be your most optimal way to remove your opponent's stadium. On the flip side, things do get slower and less disruptive without Guzma and Murshadow around. Not only that, but the troll decks with Hoopa and Rich Gigas that don't attack won't be around anymore. With no Tabulele GX around, consistency engines will likely revolve around Jirachi even more, so if you think it's expensive now, it will probably only get worse, and with no stretcher, people might be inclined to start running Brock's grid in decks. As for the best decks, without factoring in future sets, Lightning decks hardly lose anything, as their best cards are in Lost Thunder and Team Up. Malamar decks lose some significant cards, but they have good replacements, and gaining Jirachi lets them construct their decks much differently now anyways. Lost March 2 hardly loses anything, and same goes for Blazeful on Nakanadal decks too. From the decks we already have, these should be reliable options to Worlds. I'll talk about Unbroken Bonds decks soon on another video. For now, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe for all types of Pokemon TCG content, and share this video with other players. Sabre 4 with Zay!